I know Jennifer is hosting this call. She's the one that got it all started up for us today. That's who you saw hanging out in the RV, living her dream life, I guess you could say. But um, I'm going to give her a brief introduction, just talk about just a couple things real quick before she starts. Uh, we're super excited for Coach Summit. I know many of you guys are going, um, some of you for the first time. If you're not going this year, there's still a chance to go. You can get your ticket at the door, um, room up with some of our other coaches, whatever you need. If, if you need help getting that figured out, make sure you get a hold of us. And if not, make sure that you're planning for next year. Also, uh, I'm going to look at the exact date, but make sure you mark your calendar right now for Super Saturday. Super Saturday is going to be on June June 28th, so you'll be able to go look in your coach online office under events for your local Super Saturday event, so make sure to get there as well. So, awesome, looks like Jazzy is coming to register the first door as well. So, uh, what I want to do is introduce Jennifer. Jennifer started as a coach just right after I did, like a month after I started, and uh, her and I had become friends on social media through a Facebook group, and she'll she'll tell her part of her story, but we became friends on Facebook, we connected because we'd both done P90X, and we both, to be honest, she might say this, but we hated beach body coaches, we did not like beach body coaches, because all they did was try to sign us up and try to sell us Shakeology, and we didn't want to be sold to anything, we just wanted support and the group, you know, the group atmosphere of people helping people, so... There came a day when uh, I signed up as a coach after following Lindsay Matway's example, and I invited her immediately, of course, to join me in that, and it took her just a little bit to join, but she followed right after me. Um, she'll share some of it. I share on the team page, but she makes a tremendously good income with Team Beachbody, working from wherever she wants. She's at an RV right now, hanging out with her husband and her baby. So with that being said, she has some amazing things to share because she has been where you're at. And she has achieved great things. She's an elite coach, seven-star diamond coach. She has a seven-star diamond coach under her as well, who's on this call with us too. And uh, so I want you guys to pay attention, listen, and then realize that you can do the same thing that she's doing. Just go out and apply.
like a dump, so to speak. So we were broke. Um, that middle picture is kind of small there, but it uh, it says skinny fat. So that's kind of where I was in my in my journey. I have always been a skinny, thin, full kind of girl, and even though I look skinny in clothes, I was my body wasn't what I wanted it to be. So we did end up filing for bankruptcy. Both of us had to file Chapter Seven bankruptcy. We had house go into foreclosure the house that we actually lived in and called our home. We had to move, pack up our crap, and go to another place. And that's a very humbling experience. And I hope that nobody else, well, I mean, I'm sure that a lot of you may have been there before, but I would never wish it on anybody. Um, just that unsecurity of not knowing where you're going to go, where you're going to have, if you have a roof over your head tomorrow, when the bank is going to call, and um, then that middle picture says, my, my resume is basically a list of things I hate to do. I hated my job. I hated it with a passion. And when I saw that picture, I thought it was perfect because like, when I, whenever I updated my resume and I talked about how I you know, file documents and uh, prepare court pleadings and this and that, and, like, I hate doing all this stuff. So I don't know what I was thinking when I did that. But anyways, and then that last picture, NSF, uh, countless, countless, countless NSF fees from banks. And it would cause so much tension and anger in our marriage because we already didn't have any money. And then I'm getting these $35 charges on top of it. So it was, you want a certain beach buddy. it was a struggle to say the least. So that's, this is the Jennifer in 2011. This is where I was before Beachbody, and um, that's what my life was, and I felt very uh, let down as, as to what I thought my life was going to be. Okay, so where my journey started. That top picture is actually a screenshot of a blog that I had, and I had a Facebook page that went with it. And that's when I actually started doing P90X, and that's how, like, studies, that's how we actually met. So my blog was called The One Where I Did the P90X Program, and if anybody knows what that is or, uh, a quote from, I'd love to know. But um, if, if any of you guys catch that. But so that's where I was documenting my journey, and it's a guess you got it, Jessica. Um, so I wanted to really point out to you guys, I was sharing my journey with P90X before I was a coach, before I knew what a coach was, any of that. I was sharing my journey because I wanted other people to be a part of what I was doing, and I just wanted the support and the accountability of what social media offers. So I had started that. You see, there's only 37 likes right there. That was great to me. I was like, oh, 37 people following and actually caring about what I have to say. Um, underneath that is a picture from another group I was a part of, Staying Fit Family. And that's actually a Facebook group that Scotty created. And um, it was like the anti-coach group. Um, we went in there because we hated beach buddy coaches that were trying to steal us off the P90X page. And all the time, like, we would go in there and say, oh, I just did yoga X today. Well, nobody ever says that. I just did chest and back today, and then you'd get that post would be followed up with 10 people. Oh, you should be a coach. I'd love for you to join my team. And I'm like, yeah, here's my link. Come sign up. And I'm like, what? What is a coach? I just started. I'm on week one. I can't coach anybody. Like, they didn't take the time to explain what it was or how it would benefit. They just wanted, they were just sending links and not connecting. And so that was such a huge turnoff. And that's why Scotty created the Staying Fit Family. And that's where we built our friendship and I developed a trust for, um, for him. So that's where I started. And also, we supposed to start with a borrowed copy. We call it borrowed copy. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't have an actual copy of P90X. So at this point, like I said, I was broke. I 
did not buy a hundred and twenty dollar program. So So we'll see what tomorrow. We'll see what tomorrow. All right. So these are uh, some of the things that I have experienced in my journey. And I still experience them. Lack of vision, lack of belief, absolutely no money, unsupportive spouse, inconsistent and unorganized. And I bring this up because I want you guys to know that all of these things are normal. And just because it's normal doesn't mean it's acceptable. So each one of these things are all things that I have had to personally work on. And they're things that have become a part of my journey and have become a part of who I am today. So while I still struggle with being unorganized or I still struggle with being inconsistent, um, it's just created where I am today. And it's just because, I mean, you always have to work on your fitness journey, but there are these other things that you need to work on as well. And you'll develop those as you go through. Luckily, having no money and an unsupportive spouse things that I don't have to worry about anymore, though. So that's a good thing. All right, so setting your initial goals. One of my favorite things to share about my initial goals is what my initial goal was. That was I wanted, like, $50 to have some guilt-free mail money. I wanted to be able to go get my mail done without having to ask my husband if it was okay. Because, like I already said, we had no money. So even if you were to say, yes, honey, go ahead, get your nails done, I would feel guilty. I would feel like, oh, we actually have, you know, the 40 or $50, and I'm going to go just sit on a manicure. That's probably not the wisest use of money. But, you know, those little luxuries are just kind of nice, and there are things they used to have when we had money. So it kind of brings it and it brought me back to that place where I felt good about myself. And that's why I like to do it. Then after the fact, after I spent the money, then I felt guilty. So I hated that. So that was what my original goal was. I just wanted a little bit of guilt-free money. And I got there probably, you know, in the first couple of months of my business. And, um, and then I had to continue creating goals from there. So one thing I did realize as I went along is once I did hit that goal of having manicure money, I needed to set the next goal, something else that was a little bigger. So I wanted to save up enough money to go down to Florida. Um, a lot of my uh, coaches are in there. My best friend Sandy lives there, and I have uh, two little nieces that live there. And so I wanted to, you know, have the 300 bucks to fly down to Florida. And I hit that goal, and I was able to go down there and spend a few days. And then, um, you know, so I just had to keep on doing that, keep on making these small, manageable goals. I did not start on day one saying that I wanted to retire from my job. Like, that never crossed my mind. I knew that Scotty's goal was to help Gabby to retire from her job, but I was like, no, nope, that's, that's only for those kind of people, those lucky people, not for me. And, um, but if I, I think that if I would have started off with a goal like that, I would have never achieved it. I needed those small manageable goals so that I could get there, achieve it, and taste that success. So you need to be realistic but at the same time, you don't want to limit yourself. So if I never increased my goals past getting manicure money or getting air, air flight money, I don't think I would be where I am today. If, if all I ever wanted was $300 to get on a plane to Florida, I would have stopped right there. I wouldn't have continued adding people to my team. I wouldn't have continued pushing to help others on my team become successful as well. So always reevaluate where you're at. Take a picture of what your assets are and what you need in order to continue on your path. Um, one thing that really helped me is always kind of making a game plan. Um, Scotty and 
I talk every week on Tuesday with always our scheduled call, and it still is. Um, and we make the game plan, and he flat out asks me, Jen, where are you going to be by Summit? Where are you going to be at the end of the year? And any time that I shy away from answering it, he pushes me to to give him an answer because when you say it out loud and you make it public, it's more real. It, it just kind of makes it more feasible. It makes you understand that you are putting this out there and it's not just an I wish maybe someday kind of thing. You're telling yours in your upline, this is what I want. And you're allowing them, once you admit that that's what your goal is, you're allowing them to hold you accountable. So if I tell Scotty that my goal is to be, you know, a certain rank by a certain time, then I'm allow I'm giving him, like, the opportunity to ask me, to check me on that and say, well, Jen, you haven't, uh, you're not hitting success club, you're not, I don't see any workout pictures from you, like, how do you expect to get these goals if you're not following through on, you know, your actions aren't matching your goals? So, and that's a good thing. That's part of the great things about having a coach and having an upline um, and a diamond upline. That's a great way to up your accountability factor. So, also, your goals need to be your goals. Don't make goals that you think other people want you to have or don't make goals that other people on your team are making and you think that you need to follow suit because that's something that you can walk away from. You need to make the goal that is special and unique to you. Something that's going to be okay. to you. There were lots of other goals that people were setting when I first started as a coach. They wanted to make their car payment or they wanted to pay for their groceries. That kind of stuff did not that was like my fire. You need to figure out that thing that is going to light your fire and that you're not going to give up on. Okay, the difference between SC5 and SC10. So last year, I was an SC5 all-star. The year before that, I was a hit-and-miss SC5 kind of girl. And I'm sure, now that I know more about how that affects the whole overall picture, I'm sure it drove Scotty crazy. But <laughs> sorry about that, Scotty. But um, uh, I would say once I decided that SC5 was my minimum goal, it was a decision. It wasn't like a well, it would be nice if I hit SC5 this month. It was like a, no, I am not going to sleep if I don't have those points. It was we just going to go last month. Yeah, I just did have that experience today. 9 p.m. <laughs> on, on, on the last day of May. Yeah. Okay. And um, it's something I won't give up on. It's something that means something to me and it's important to me. So I... Um, and I had a specific conversation, I remember. You know how sometimes there's those conversations where you remember everything. You remember the setting, you remember the temperature, you remember what you were wearing. Like, you just remember the entire scene. Well, last year, I was at the leadership conference in um, Dana Point, California. And me and Mike and uh, Scotty and Gabby were all sitting in the hot tub. And um, we were talking about um, SC5, and or we were talking about Success Club, and I was just kind of talking about how I was ready to kind of up my game a little bit. I wanted a, I wanted to push myself as a leader and just do a little bit more. And Scotty says you need to get SC10, and I was like, no, I struggle to get SC5 every month. There is no way that I can get SC10. I got SC10 once in my whole time as a coach before this, and it was because I begged my mom and my grandma and somebody else because it was like Team Cup month or something like that. I was adamant that it was not in my cards. I was like, nope, you've got the wrong girl. Find someone else because this girl 
is not an SB10 person. Well, so that was in September, and sometime between September and December, I decided that I was going to do it. I was going to make SB10 my new goal. So uh, starting in January, I have hit SB10 so far every month. Actually, I've hit more than 10, more than 10 every month so far. And um, I have been one of those people that was waiting to hear what the secret is to get from SP5 to SP10. I was one of those people that was waiting to hear what that magical formula is. Like, oh, I need to send how many invites and how many requests. Like, what's the magic formula? But you know what? There is no magic formula, and there is no magic script or anything like that. It really is belief. And once I decided and I believed that I could do it, then it just became my new non-negotiable. It was... Oh, yeah. When I was making my, um, like my, not to give you resolutions, but just kind of my beginning of the year stuff. I think that's the way. Oh, okay. So, like, I made SC5. Where is it? Oh. It's not showing up. Oh, there it is. SC10 All-Star. Well, whatever. So, I put it on my phone. I see it every day. I see it. I, it's on the fridge. It's on my computer desktop. I don't go anywhere. I don't go one day without seeing it, and I know that that's the goal that I have to hit. I committed to it, and um, that's the difference. And I wish I could tell you some kind of magic secret, but it really just comes down to belief. Because once you decide that that's what it is, that's the minimum. And there, in my mind, SB five doesn't exist. I don't even know what that is. SB ten is the only option. So that's, um, that it was, and it's just a change in mindset. So that was that. All right. So what was, what was my story is not my story anymore. This is a, um, something I was actually speaking to, uh, Jeff from Beachbody Corporate today. And I don't know if any of you guys have, uh, felt this way, but when I first became a coach, and even probably was in my first two years as a coach, I didn't think I had a story. I figured, well, I'm just an average girl, just a shy girl, I have a lot of friends in real life. Um, I'm not the girl that like attracts a lot of people, and you know, I'm not the person at the party that has everyone circling around me wanting to hear the latest and greatest. I'm not that girl, and um, I didn't have a huge weight loss transformation. I, I don't know. I've just always considered myself to be kind of an ordinary girl. And um, but as I have grown as a person uh, through Beachbody, um, I've realized that I have a lot to offer. And I actually do have a story. And I think part of the reason that I didn't believe that I did is because I didn't want to admit it. And there's parts of my story that I probably still haven't even brought up to people because I haven't gotten to that place of confidence to share it. But um, I just want you guys to know that your story does matter, and the things that you have gone through in your life, those are the things that are going to attract people to you, and those are the things that are going to let people know that you're a real person, and that you have gone through so many obstacles and other things in life that you can help other people get through. Beachbody is not always going to be just about helping somebody lose weight. There are tons of free resources out there for people to lose weight. There's free workouts on Pinterest. There's free workouts on Tony Horton's YouTube channel. Beachbody is an avenue to change somebody's life because of what you've been through.
up in your life. So never think that you don't have a story to share. And you just have to be comfortable and in a place where you are willing to be vulnerable and open yourself to sharing what that is in hopes that the right person hears it and the right person connects with you and is able to open up to you so that you can help them. So, um, it, you know, it took me a long time to even share that I had been through bankruptcy or to share about any of our financial problems or to say that Mike and I had, you know, a hard time in our marriage because we were struggling financially. Nobody likes to admit that. Um, you know, I was the skinny girl. I didn't want to ever say, well, kind of skinny, but I don't really want to wear a bathing suit. You know, those are things that you just kind of want to shove under the rug and smile and just pretend like everything is okay. But everything isn't always going to be okay. And um, the more that you share that, the more real that you become on social media. And I think that that's actually one of the reasons why I had such a great friendship and trust with Scotty, because he's been very open from the beginning as to what his story is, what his issues are. He had a whole house full of kids, and, you know, I mean, everybody knows Scotty's story, and that's one of the things that I think sets Scotty apart as a successful coach is his story has been shared and shared and shared. So when you are considering ways that you can expand your network and that you can increase your reach and increase the ways that you're able to help people, just remember that that's, that's what Scotty has done and it's a great example for all of us to follow, me included. I need to become much better at sharing my story and creating a better story. Okay, so what has changed for my family? Now, like I said, I've been in this now for just over three years. And in that time, I have retired from my full-time job as a paralegal. So that was last year that I left my full-time job. I was making $35,000 a year. And it was a guaranteed income. You know, I never had to worry about a check coming. Um, I had benefits. I had a, uh, what is that thing called? Like a sharing plan, 401k or whatever. Um, so I had all of those guarantees and I walked away from that. And um, my mother-in-law, she was working at a crappy job where she had originally started off doing something she liked, but then because of the economy and certain other things, uh, you know, they pushed her into a, a like shelf stocking position, and it was ridiculous for her to be doing that as an older person. And so we were able to have her leave her job, and um, now we're able to pay her a weekly salary where she's making more than she's making more than she was at the crappy job. And now she comes to our house and watches my son. Um, a few hours, and um, she also helps me with some of my beach body tasks. And she's also building her own beach body business as well. Um, we have a savings account. Like, what the heck is that? A savings account, money that is set aside for whatever, for an emergency. For Mike would probably want lots of um, stuff, but. Um, motorcycle and things like that. It's for whatever. It's for saving. And we've never had that. Like even I'll admit that even when we had money before when we were in real estate, we were not very um what's the word? No, we weren't frugal. We were um spenders. Yeah, we were spenders and we didn't do much saving. So it it feels good. Um have a savings account. We can travel and enjoy time together without freaking out about expenses. Have you guys ever been in that place where 
like you have to get a new tire or you have to get a new battery in your car or the AC goes out at your house. Like all of those little things that used to be such a big deal. Now they're okay. We can get through it now. We can contribute to our church a lot more and we're able to help and you know, do a lot more charitable contributions. Um, we are paying off our debt. And uh, we're not totally there yet, but we're working on it, and we're making big strides towards that. And lastly, every six days is a vacation day, and today is day one of four for that. Yeah, because Mike works on a six-day, on a four-day off-rotating schedule. So, um... There's the four attempt to work all four days off. Doubles, triples. Yeah, when we had no money... Mike would maximize the amount of time he would do in overtime work. And um, for the police, you guys that don't know, he's a, he's a police officer. And so he would be working his regular shift, which is 10 hours. And then he would go right from that to working extra jobs or like extra details, whatever you want to call it. And um, he would just go back to back to back. Sometimes he would be gone for longer than a full day, and I wouldn't even see him. And by the time I left for work, he wouldn't even be back. And so that was another strain. But we did it because we needed every single penny. We needed every dollar to get by. So basically what the bottom line of this slide is just showing what constant, consistent efforts do. It's not to show what we have. What we have is very obtainable. Uh, we actually think that we're on a slower stride as coaches. Okay, so why is worth it? Um, so I think this is one of my last slides. Um, this is from, your three an this three year anniversary. Is from my blog where I wrote about my three year anniversary. So. These um, income numbers, the 2014 income number is now a little outdated because um, it's from March or March? No, it's or, from May, but we yeah, had a few weeks week last yeah. week. So. so, but we had a huge, we had our biggest week last year, which is the one that last Scotty, week. our last, <laughs> last week, um, the one that got deposited today. And the coolest thing happened, I got, I just started using mint.com and they sent me an alert, an, a large deposit alert. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty cool. But anyways. Um, I wish I gave all the money to the guy for this deck. Yeah. Well. Uh, so anyways, um, so these numbers are a little, the last one's a little outdated. But um, the, the post that Scotty had or originally posted in Team Dynasty about a $5,000 week earner. Um, in my first business there, yes, I made $5,000 last week. And almost a thousand dollars in my second business center, and then my business center earned a little bit, and so did my uh, mother-in-law's account. So the the cool thing about it is that duplication is happening, and um, right, it's, it's not to show off. I mean, it's it's really only meant to inspire. Exactly. And so I I share these numbers with you guys just to show you. I didn't start off as a rock star. I was not one of those people that as soon as I signed up, I had a bunch of people following right behind me waiting to sign up. I think it took me three months to get to Emerald. It took me a year to get Diamond. And then it took me about two years to get Star Diamond. You know, so, most people don't know this, but to this date, we have, what, probably 24, 26 active coaches in our first business center. Jennifer even has a blog about it. So many people think you need all these coaches, and, and you don't. Granted, it helps, but you just need to look for it. You just need to inspire and do your journey. I mean, 24 coaches with this kind of income, it, it's, it's pretty amazing. Uh, so so don't, don't think you have to be a huge recruiter. You just have to do what you do in the best, in the best way that you can do it. Yes. So, um... So I want you to know that I didn't start off that way, but because I was consistent and I also think because I had regular calls with Scotty and he was able to, it, it made it so I didn't give up. It made it so that when I was having a bad month, he 
he reminded me what I was working for. And a lot of times, just as humans, um, you know, when other stuff happens in life, we put our dreams and our goals aside. We put them on the back burner. But when you have that weekly accountability, and Scotty was able to remind me of what I was working for, I wouldn't, he was basically making so making it so he wouldn't let me give up on these goals that I had shared with him. So thank you so much, Scotty, for everything, for all of that, because um, it definitely made a huge difference. So... a big part of, um, of my business, and it's actually kind of what took us from probably a three-figure earner to, uh, to a six-figure earner, and he's been a huge, um, a huge piece of the puzzle for me, and he was supposed to be kind of on the call to kind of giving his own little tidbits here and there, especially because... I've been working on the lighting because we're now we're in pitch black, so I've just kind of been on the side. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not trying to be off on the side, but I'm actually holding a candle over her head so you guys can see. Oh, they want to see, see you. Look, this, this, is, this is my job. I'm actually holding light for my wife so that she can be seen on the call. This is this is what happens when you're supporting spouts. Yeah. actually hold a torch. I feel like from like survivor, you know. <laughs> so, they, they want to know so. what finally convinced you to be supportive. <laughs> and were you always on board? No, I actually hated it. I hated everything. I, I hated absolutely, I'm going to put my torch down. I, put, I absolutely hated everything about this. I mean, we had zero, zero dollars. Um, I remember when Jennifer told me, I remember right where I was, I was actually sitting in my police car. I had worked all night. I got off at 7 in the morning, but court wasn't until 9. I found a little hole to go sleep in for a couple hours. I was going to sign in the court, and she calls me and says that, that she's not going to get over this whole beach body thing and that she needs to sign up and that she already had somebody that wants to sign up with her and, uh, and they were going to work it as a team. And, and so I had just worked all night, and, and we didn't have a nickel. <laughs> I mean, we didn't have a dollar, and she's like, and I said, how much does it gonna cost? And she's, she's like, a hundred dollars or whatever it was. There were no challenge packs at that time when we signed up. You had to buy Shakeology, and I think you had to pay the forty dollars. Yes. Uh, so, and, and it was ridiculous. And Jen has never finished or even accomplished anything in her entire life. And and when you're that broke, you have to be honest and say, why do I think? That this is going to be different. Why do I think that this event is going to be different than the last 30 events that, that we've started? So, I mean, I really didn't have any faith in it. You know, I, I didn't never believe the product. I always, I always believed that Shakeology could work. I just didn't think that the money was there for us. And, uh, and actually now Shakeology is probably one of the cheapest things that we have. Because we were able to get off of GNC, we were able to get rid of that. Now when I work night shift and the uh, and, and all the restaurants are closed and all that's open is McDonald's, I've got my shake right there with me. Um, and, and it gets me through the night. Uh, we've, we've gotten off several medications. It actually saves money. And this is something that, that, that's really important for your coaches to know. That, that, that Shakeology is so much more than the shake. I mean, that... that that monthly cost gets everything here. This call list is free. I mean, the board, this is free. Scotty Hobbs is free. Unless he's charging. I don't know. He doesn't charge us. But, I mean, <laughs> I, mean, yeah, I wouldn't pay him anyways. But, you know, <laughs> but either way, you know what I mean? It's all included in that, you know? And what does your coach make, you know? I mean, it, it, it's, it's, like the, it's like the best investment that a person can make. And so that, that's something that really... It took me about seven months. Right? No, maybe even longer. It might even been, I think it was 2012. It was December 2012 when I decided that this was a real business. 
so Jennifer started in May of 2011. I was actually a thorn in her side and an anti beach body for about a year and a half. And I think that's why I think that's why I, I stay so active. You know, I spend more time working in Jen's job than I do my own. And you know, I work with everyone. And I think that's because I'm trying to I'll end up spending the rest of my life making up for my disbelief. So I, I, I give her and anyone on this team anything I can because because I didn't believe. I'm the first one to admit. You know what I mean? And now and now I'm sitting in my dream RV on my nice deck that she paid for. So I mean I just gotta be be nice to her. So. But it's funny because I, I actually used to have my stuff get delivered to my office because if Mike would see beach body boxes being delivered to the house, he would just flip out. Be like more beach body crap. What the heck? What are you doing? I was like, see, this is how they get you. That's yeah. always what I said. This is all I would say every week. I was like, see, this is how they get you. You yeah. know, and then that stupid coach me came out, and I was like, see, this is how they get you. Yeah. You know. But I'll tell you, one of the other things that kind of sealed the deal for Mike's belief was the um the coach earning statement that's posted. That's right. That actually changed my entire belief. There's a coach earning statement that says what the average emerald makes, average diamond, average star diamond, and I always thought my wife could at least be average. So I was like, well, wow. I think a diamond showed like, what, 16000 a year or something average or 14000 or twelve. whatever it was. It was a lot of money. And I was like, are you kidding me? So, 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 I, that, so she wasn't making that. We showed a coach the other day that was concerned about her income, and we actually showed her that we didn't have our first like, three-figure week for months after trying. So I mean, people don't realize that. The slides that we showed were nothing more of what consistent and everything. Like, last month was horrible. We didn't have our numbers. Yeah. You know, we didn't have our numbers, so the last week of the month was stressful. But you know what? We must have done something wrong. We didn't reach enough people. We did something, and we had to struggle for it. And it was we had two hours to spare, and it, it, it was ridiculous. But but I would tell you, for the people that have non-supporting spouses, and this is actually Jennifer touches on this. She has a she has a link. I, I think you have something on your uh, YouTube about it. But, but I, would, I would tell you to try and include them as much as you can in what you're doing. Even if they're not interested, share them. Share with them just like you would share with your page. Jennifer has a great YouTube video called The Coffee Analogy. I mean, her team loves this one where she talks about people buying coffee or a waitress offering coffee. This is how you need to treat your husband as well. So, you know what I mean? You, you've got to give him the respect and the time he needs. I remember the day and the time. It was Christmas, 2012. I tell the coaches I talk to all the time. I opened a gift, and it was a $280 bottle of, of, uh, of scotch, uh, Johnny Walker Blue. We were poor as church mice. And, and here's this, this $300 bottle of alcohol. And I said... Where the heck did this come from? I cannot believe you put money on a credit card. Because we had a secured credit card. We had no we had no credit. So we actually had a secured line from uh, from Chase Capital One. So we had a secured money. I thought she maxed it out. And she says, hey, you know that beach body thing that you've been making fun of me for over a year? And I said, yeah. She said, well, I'm actually a pretty big deal now. So... And I was like, wow, are you serious? And then she showed me what she was earning. And I was like, oh, my gosh. It was still like, like what, 100 or 200 a week, something like that. Maybe somewhere around there, but it's a year and a half into the business. And, you know, and she's like, look what I'm doing. So either way, so that. Yeah, and, it, and you guys know when I first started um, this call and I told you that I wanted money to myself, like I wanted guilt-free money. Well, I had my guilt-free money, and I wasn't necessarily telling him how much I was making because I wanted it, like, so I could use it for whatever I wanted to use it for. But then, when I got 
closer to the end of the year, um, and I realized that I was going to get a 1099, that's when I decided I better sell them, because, um, Right, I think it was like a seven thousand dollar ten ninety nine this year, and she's like, well, "What the heck am I going to do?" Yeah. And I was like, "Oh my gosh, you're kidding me! You made seven thousand dollars? You bet it was in a year." I mean, we've got so many coaches that are beating us, and then they email us and ask why they're, they're starting so slow. And I'm like, "Oh, I only have like SC fifty, you know." And it's like, you know what I mean? But they're like, "Oh, it, it, it's amazing the growth that, that everyone is having." So. I would tell you, you guys with unsupportive spouses, just just show. Do not get mad. Share what you're doing. Oh, just be a product other, of a product. One other thing that really helped um, for us was once Mike finally agreed to let me sign up, we set a timeline. That was true. And um, basically, the yeah, deal. Right. No. Basically, the deal was he was going to let me try. Um, you know, he was going to let me work on building this business and show that I, like, I was, I needed to prove him wrong, basically. What was the first? Six months. Six months. And, um, basically, those six months, he wasn't supposed to make fun of me or, you know, give me a hard time about being on calls and webinars and whatever. And if at the end of six months, if we decided that it wasn't, working for us, then I had to agree to walk away without, like, throwing a fit. So, um, and I think that really helped give both of us an expectation and a timeline, and, you know, we both agreed to that. So, if you, um, you know, if maybe you talk to your spouse about it that way, and set a timeline, it doesn't have to be six months, um, whatever is comfortable for you guys, and um, just kind of set some boundaries. Now, whatever that goal is, understand, you know, make a goal that you're going to achieve. You know, like Jen said in her beginning slide, don't make a goal, well, in six months, if I'm not making 10 times Shakeology, uh, then, then I'm going to quit. You know what I mean? If your goal was just to get the transformation and, and, just, to, and just to be maybe referring a coach or two or maybe just being an emerald, having one or two coaches, whatever it is, grow into your shoes. You know what I mean? Don't just put clod hoppers on and hope that they uh, and hope that you can run them. You know, you've got to choose the right shoe. So, so choose the right goal. Choose a goal that's obtainable because your spouse is going to look for you to fail. Okay, that's that's what I I looked for her to fail. Number one, I knew if she didn't fail, she was going to drag me along with her, and and I didn't want to leave parties behind. And I didn't want to leave Wendy's behind. I didn't want to do that. So I knew if I could get her to fail, that I'd be in the clear. It, it was for my own personal reasons. So don't think that they don't want you to fail because they do. They don't. They're not doing it to be mean. They're doing it for their own survival. Okay, and that's the same thing with your with your uh, people that are watching on your page. They want you to fail. They really do. They're not trying to be mean, but they 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 can't see you succeed. Because if you succeed, they knew you. They knew who you were. That, that gets rid of their excuse. Yeah, People I, knew that we were poor. They watched us go through bankruptcy. I mean, my father-in-law had to elect us. Like, they, he tried to do a real estate deal with like 30 grand, and we lost his mind. He knew we were broke. So they wanted us to fail. Because as soon as we, we did it, we took away the excuse of why they can't do it. And that's a big deal, guys. That's a real big deal. So, yeah. you know, we used to have a coach uh, who, who, who her, her co-workers used to play tricks on her and put, like, snicker bars in her in her desk because she was losing weight. And they, they wanted her to get off her journey. They really did. They needed her to get off of it. Because if you're on it and you're being consistent, they've lost their excuse. So, so one other question I saw there. Um, from Sharice, and she asked um, what, what my key duplication was, I think. Um, and I would say that I think one of the things that really helped me was becoming the coach that I wanted to be. Like, all right, so I'll go ahead and tell you guys. Like, my goal is to be 15 star by Summit next year. Now, that goal is only what? 
three months old. Yeah. Right? Because we used to tell the guy that we worked with, our corporate guy, that'll never happen. We will not do it. We don't yeah. want it. And now here, Jennifer's like, all right, 15 stars. Yeah. That's terrific. So, yeah, so I've, I set that goal. And um, I can't wait until next year to become a 15 star coach in, in my actions. I have to act that way today. I have to act as if I have 15 diamonds and the downline that goes with it. And I think that when you, um, you know, when you present yourself that way to your coaches and to your um, to your sphere around you who's watching you, then they just start to see it in you. They see a change in you, and you just start having that influence in other people's lives. And um, so, like, well, if I was what? Oh, well, John, because remember when Scotty signed up with Lindsay, he thought she was like the number one coach. I don't remember. Scotty could tell us exactly how many stars she was, but she was new. Wasn't it? No. She was just a diamond. No. I mean, she, she, Scotty thought she was the no, she thought he thought she was the number one coach because that's what she portrayed herself to be. So when Scotty chose who to go with, he's like, "Well, I'm going with her." See, Scotty thinks she was a diamond, but he thought he, he thought she was like the top. I think she she even started the she started the trend top coach tips. I think that originated with her. I mean, you know, and she's like, well, what did she know? But you know, yeah. so that that's amazing. So what Jennifer did, and what she teaches her coaches to do, is to, to not wait. If you want to be a two star diamond, you better be leading your team as a two star diamond. Don't wait for Scotty to lead your team. Don't wait for Jennifer to lead your team. Use them as as backbones, use them as as, as as springboards, but make sure that you're paving the way. I mean, we, we've now changed our, 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 our way of looking at it. Like, we've got the fit family. We used to be like fit for life, and we still are. But now we've got healthy for life, and now we've got all these different fabulous, fabulous for life. life and female uh, lobby. Female lobby. And all, all these different teams that make up our family that are people that are going out there and paving forward. I promise you we don't have any 15-star diamonds. We've got one that will probably be shortly. But these people are acting like it now. And, and because of that, they're, they're paving that way. Jennifer's duplicated that. Right. So you have to be a coach that people are going to want to, to emulate. Like you have to, and that's one of those takeaways I have um, listed up there. Be the best leader, be the best challenger, be the best friend, be the best so if you do those things, then people will want to duplicate what you're doing because you're going to be showing success. You're going to be showing a good transformation. You're going to be a really cool person because you're going to be doing your personal development and sharing tons of inspirational, cool things. And when people duplicate those things, then their business is going to grow. So it all kind of takes care of itself. So um, let's go ahead. Is there another slide up for this? Um, oh, yeah, because we're about to run low battery. I think the last one is just the, the call to action. Okay. Anyways, the last thing right here, we've got it, the last slide. It's being consistent. We just did a YouTube on this. Whatever you guys are going to do, whatever speed you want to work this business, you may not have the ability to do it at all. Hey guys, it looks like their their battery ran out. I heard them saying it for six percent. So great call, huh? So if you have a spouse that doesn't quite believe in you yet or doesn't know, this might be a great one to share with them. Um, and I'm challenging you guys. We're gonna prove Mike wrong. There's not gonna be 40 posts with the hashtag FC5 by June 13th. There's gonna be how many of them? Somebody type it in there and tell us how many hashtag posts are gonna be tonight. 51. There you go. Yes, Jennifer's so amazing. You know, it was like 16 to 18 months before Michael finally believed. It was funny. Mike invited me out to their house in Tennessee. And I was, he sent me a text. He's like, hey, can you come to Jennifer's surprise birthday party? And I was like, I hadn't traveled anywhere yet. You know, I was a coach for a year and a half. I was like, I just told him no. I was like, no, I can't go out there. And then I, I was thinking about it. I was like, you know what? Jennifer is my most consistent coach. 
it'll definitely pay off. I need, I'm gonna, I need to go out there and surprise her. So I went out there to Tennessee uh, with Carolina. She's on this call. She picked me up in Atlanta. We drove up there, had a surprise birthday party. You know, and it was, you know, part of that was uh, when when Michael was fully in as well. He's like, oh, okay, this is this is real. This is all. This is we're all in with this. We're gonna make this happen. So. I'm going to leave you guys with this. We are an hour in, so this call was recorded. So I am going to end the recording, and, you know, I'm, I'm excited. We have, uh, like, 15 more coaches than we had on last week. So if this if this call helped you, I challenge you on top of what Jennifer shared. If this call helped you today, help another coach on our team. Tell them about the calls. Tell them how it helped you. Because these calls really should be maxed out at 500 people. So we'll see you next week on Thursday. I like my language right there, too. Me too. You? Mm -hmm. See where I put it? Mm -hmm. Look at it. Probably took my bike home. Get a reason to keep that one up here. We should get another one. Mm. You know what I mean? We're going to get outside and everything. Just get some more bricks over piers. Daryl, back again for Old Man Franklin Motors, now open in Oak Ridge. You've probably heard me say that you've got a friend down at OB. Well, actually, you've got many friends. You've got a friend helping you find the exact vehicle you're looking for. With over 250 on the lot, if you don't see what you want, we'll help you find it. You've got a friend of finance because we own the bank. OB provides guaranteed financing and 1.49 interest rate. You've got a friend in service, too, with lifetime power train warranty, certified mechanic, and even $12 oil changes. Come see your many friends today 